Let's go. Great battle up here at the front of the, the, the lead here. Jeff Burton, teammate, A.J. Allmendinger, to the checkered flag. There you go, 10 pushes, 10 pushes. Good work, good work. 10 inside, inside with a 10, 11 with you. 11 with you, middle three, clear three bottom, wide. clear bottom. Get to the bottom. The calling cars. Get to the bottom. Controlling the field. What lane do you choose with just a two lap sprint here in overtime? Good job, buddy. Nobody knows the highs and lows of a season better than a fellow driver. This week, I head to Arkansas to meet up with one tearing up the track thanks to the help of a familiar sponsor. But before I talk racing, I wanted to talk rice with two brothers growing it sustainably. Wish I would have packed my waders for this one. Jeb. Terry Moody. Nice to meet you, Terry. Alex Moody. Nice to meet you, Alex. Nick Crouch. Appreciate you having me out here on your farm. How long have y'all been growing rice? We've been growing rice since we started farming. In the last three years, probably half of our crop goes to seed production. I noticed, you know, Arkansas is really the, like this, the rice capital, you would call it. What, what makes Arkansas so good for growing rice? We got a lot of ground that if you're thinking about what it could grow. So a lot of our ground could grow 20, 30 bushel soybeans, but it can grow 200 bushel rice. We're the number one rice state, but we also produce cotton, corn, uh, soybeans, peanuts, uh, do wheat in some areas, but uh, we're very diverse. Most of uh, the rice here in the Delta is flood irrigated still. It'll probably always be that way because of the availability of the groundwater. Gotcha, and you, you're controlling the water, when to flood it, when to drain it. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That works out pretty good then. That's awesome. We do some of that back home with impoundments and stuff like that for hunting purposes. What what goes into sustainable rice production? Sustainability, it's especially rice, it's it's globally, you know, all over. Everybody's trying to be better, better stewards. But uh, you know, for our area, you know, Terry and Alex are, you know, they're kind of on the cutting edge here. Instead of using some groundwater, we're utilizing tailwater recoveries, you know, our reservoirs. So we're supplementing what we'd be pulling from the ground by, by reusing. Uh, and, and we're also, by doing that, uh, you know, we're, we're cutting down a lot of the runoff, which is, which is helping, in, you know, helping out with everything. Helping erosion and all kinds of things. Oh yeah, a lot, a lot of different things, but also helping down with the, with the nutrient runoff. If you don't take care of the land, she's not going to take care of you, right? Pretty passionate about that, actually, you know. We probably go above and beyond, wouldn't you say, more than local people about taking care of it, going the extra mile, putting at least what we take away from it back. Despite the rain, it was fun learning about one of my favorite grains. But now it's time to head into town and talk shop with Jonathan Davenport, a driver consistently leading the field in the Lucas Oil Dirt Late Model Series. While I was expecting to see a race car when I arrived, I wasn't expecting to see this one. What's going on, guys? Hey, man. What's up? Jeb. Jonathan Davenport. Nice, nice to meet you. Jeb Steve Martin. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Look at that thing. What do you think about that? That's uh, pretty awesome. Do you, you know that guy? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> this sits here all the time? It's been here quite a while, yep. Dang. You can tell by the seat it was dad because how little, <laughs> little it is. He's a little guy. Hey, yeah, let's check these out. Um, is the brake adjuster like a left rear shutoff valve or something like we, that? We have a right front shutoff switch and then we have a proportioning valve from front to rear. Okay, I use that a lot in my car. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. I think I could fit right in there. You're a little bit bigger than me, but I think I can. Oh do yeah, it. you can get in there. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely a lot of fun. It's uh, it's challenging for sure. Uh, once you get it figured out in one condition, the racetrack changes and it is totally, totally different, different the next lap. It's a very humbling sport. Oh, you, I you, know. You, you can be a hero you, one you week know. and you get your butt and kicked the next. Not even make the race the next. No, so. I understand. How, how has your partnership with Nutrient been the last couple of years? It's been great. This is my fourth year with Nutrient Ag and uh, with Steve and um, all of his associates there. They, they great bunch of people. We've uh, had a lot of fun. I see all the trophies over there. How many races have you won this year and what's the biggest one? Uh, this year we've had a great year. We were probably around the 20 win mark, I think. Uh, we've uh, won the 
a big race at, at Bristol, a dirt race there. Uh, we just got back a couple weeks ago. We won a 50,000 to win USA Nationals uh, in Cedar Lake, Wisconsin. And we've had several uh, wins with the uh, Lucas Oil Series. We're currently sitting second in points with them. Awesome. And uh, we end up missing a race, but anyway, we're, we're, we're trying to catch back up with that. But uh, we're, we're having a great season so far. This is his fourth season, you know, with this team. And the first season, he won a national title. The second season, he backed it up with another national title. Uh, had a real decent year last year, but not, not as good. G going into his fourth season, He's second in points right now, and as of today, he's the number one dirt late model driver in the nation right now. So what did you all see in Jonathan to make him the Nutrient Ag Solutions driver? He represents us well. That, that was the main thing. Plus, he's a winner. Yeah, he can drive, can he? I mean, no, I mean, nobody wants to be associated with a loser. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Jonathan, a lot of the farmers come to the racetracks. Have you enjoyed your time spending with those guys when they come see you race? Oh yeah, certainly. There's uh, many times, just about every place we go, we'll, we'll either have people either work for Nutrient Ag Solutions come up and uh, when I'm signing autographs or whatever, or I'll have a lot of farmers come up and it's like they're, their way of almost sponsoring our team because they'll say, well, I, I went and bought such and such, you know, this week or, we, yeah. you know, uh, our Nutrient Ag uh, down here in whatever state they're in, you know, they. Um, that's their main supply for their whole farm. So they, it's actually their little way to where they think they're helping our race team too. So it's pretty cool to get the involvement of the farmers and the employees. What has this partnership with Nutrien and this race team meant to you and your family and your career? It's been awesome for my career. Um, it's almost like another turning point. Um, you know, I've won a championship before, I've won big races before, but I've never won them in a consistent manner that I have been in the last four years. So it's, uh, it's definitely been huge for me and my family. Thank you again for spending some time with me. Yeah, no doubt. Appreciate you coming up and you know getting to getting to see our what we got going on here and getting check out the cars. Maybe we can get you in one one time. Yeah, that would be, uh, that'd be, that'd be great. pretty cool. Yes, sir. Well, yes, this sir. man right here will probably make it thank work. You. Thank you. Yeah, Good thank luck to the rest of the season. Buddy. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. And we saw the 10 slow on the track. Parker, what they decide? Right, so he just lost power. He's been trying to cycle the battery switch. Somewhere in this 10 car, obviously he was up the top five. Had a great run for Jeff Burton. 